In this session, let us solve few more problems in synchronous machine at loaded conditions. Okay. First question is a three phase 400 volts, 5 kilowatt star connected synchronous motor having an internal reactance of 10 ohm. Only reactance. Okay. Resistance is neglected. He is operating at 50% of load UPF. Now the excitation is increased by 1%. What will be the new load in percent if the power factor is to be kept same? Power factor is to be kept same. Now let us draw phasor diagram first. Okay. So if we draw phasor diagram, for example, this is going to be terminal voltage Vt. Okay. So with this terminal voltage, in the first case, 50% of load UPF. So IA1 or I1 is in line with it. If I1 is in line with it, Vt plus Ia axis or minus x forget about it. Ultimately, with respect to I, 90 degrees with respect to I, Ia axis will come. Now, if it is generator, EF should be leading. If it is motor, EF should be lagging. So, I have to consider here, this is going to be EF1. And this is going to be Ia axis. This is going to be I1 axis. Okay. So, what they have done now, in the second case, EF is increased by 1%. Okay, so because my field current excitation is increased by 1% and again power factor is unity power factor only. So means my EF IA axis should be increased like this such that this should be EF2. Okay, so means EF2 if it is like this, IA2 X S is going to be like this. So IA2 XS is increased, so I2 is going to be increased. Now, phasor diagram is fit or not? Yes, because I1 excess EF, I2 excess EF, in both cases, both are operating at unity power factor only. So, by this, we can say one thing compared to Vt, I1 cos pi 1 is going to be 0. Okay, sorry, 1 pi 1 is going to be 0. Or Vt, I2 output power is increased or not? Yes, for example, if you think of this is delta, this is delta, EF sin delta. Okay, so EF sin delta is going to be this. EF2 sin delta 2 is going to be increased. Okay, so active power is increased. So active power will be increased. That is the conclusion. And delta will be increased. That is the conclusion. So directly, outrightly, we can say it should be more means that it cannot be right answer. Okay, 50% cannot be right answer. It should be more than 50%. Now let us try to solve. Okay, now in the first case, 50% of load. So how much is the load current here? For example, let me calculate full load current first. Full load current is going to be how much? 5000. 5 kilowatt divided by root 3 into 400 is going to be uh, full load current. Okay. So full load current is going to be 7.217 amperes. Okay. Now what is, uh, what is I1? I1 in the first case I1 is going to be half of 7.21. Okay. So is going to be 3.61 amperes. Okay. Now let me calculate EF1 black. Okay. So it is given as synchronous motor. Okay. So in motor what is the, for example, in motor this is going to be EF. And this is going to be excess and this is going to be IA and this is going to be VT because with respect to VT current should go in because it's motor. Okay. So what is here VT minus JIA excess. Okay. So what is EF1? EF1 equal to VT is going to be how much? 400 by root 3. Okay, because 400 is going to be line voltage, we have to calculate phase voltage. So what is V phase, Vt per phase is going to be 400 divided by root 3, which will give you 230.9 volts, because all calculations will be per phase only. So EF1 is going to be 230.9 minus J, because Vt minus drop is going to be EF. So minus J, how much is resistance value, sorry, reactance value J10 into I at an angle pi. So 3.61 at an angle 0. Okay. So if you observe here, okay, it came down to 230.9 minus J36.1. Okay. They could give like, you know, power factor also. Why didn't they give power factor? Because in online calcium. 
okay so it is going to be easy to calculate in online okay now do we need delta here no okay because ultimately length of ef if you know that length of ef can be multiplied by 1.01 because one person increased it will come so delta one is not required okay so how much is this is going to be 230.9 square 230.9 square plus 36.1 square under root because delta is not required so which will come down to 233.75 okay now let us calculate ef2 ef2 is going to be how much one percent increased so 1.01 .01 into this 233.75 okay because this is increased by one percent here it is given okay so that will come down to 236.09 volts okay now you got ef2 ef2 and unity power factor you know now we have to calculate i2 okay so how much is ef2 ef2 equal to vt minus j xs into i2 at an angle zero because unity power factor so what is vt again this is going to be terminal voltage is 230.9 volts so 230.9 minus j 10 into i2 value i don't know at an angle zero okay now let us do squaring on both sides how much is ef to 230.236.09 okay so 236.09 at an angle delta 2 equal to 230.9 minus j 10 i2 now squaring on both sides squaring on both sides so if you do squaring on both sides this is square equal to this is square plus this is square that's it so it is going to be 236.09 square equal to 230.9 square plus 100 i2 square can we calculate i2 or not yes so if you calculate i2 from here this will give you 4.876 amperes okay so i2 you came how much percentage of full load is this for example in percentage i2 equal to 4.876 by what is full load current we calculated 7.217 okay so 7.217 into 100 percent okay so this will give you roughly 67.9 percent okay so problem is solved now one thing is if you are unable to understand repeat it again because that is the advantage of videos now let us think of the second problem okay in the second problem what is given here in this problem like you know it's a bit uh, efficiency related problem 400 volts 50 kva 0.8 power factor lead delta connected 50h synchronous machine has excess of two ohms with armature resistance of negligible armature resistance friction and windage losses are 2 kilowatt and the core loss is 0.8 kilowatt the shaft is supplying 9 kilowatt at 0.8 lead the line current drawn is okay so in a motor what is shaft power they have given okay so actually one thing let me tell you few people think that like you know motor output is 9 kilowatt at point eight lead no 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 motor output will be always like you know real power only active power only in motor output like you know lagging leading or reactive power nothing will come so motor output will be always active power okay they are asking the line current input side they are asking okay now let us think of input how much is the input is going to be 9 kilowatt at the output side plus 2 kilowatt plus 0.8 kilowatt is going to be 11.8 kilowatt is the input very simple question okay and here what is this input this is input no motor input so motor input equal to root 3 vl il cos theta okay so root 3 vl il cos theta equal to 11.8 kilowatt now let us calculate il line current okay see here it is connected in delta 
so you have to like you know see properly whether they ask the phase current or line current so fortunately they ask line current because in delta connected okay if it is delta connected directly root 3 vl il cos theta is going to be the three phase power how if they ask for example phase current line current divided by root 3 you have to do but anyway this is line current only they asked divided by root 3 into line voltage is 400 into theta is 0.8 lead okay so just simply we have to calculate this will come down to 21.29 amperes where is 21.29 is going to be this okay now let us see one more question that is actually this is related to power systems okay so here a round rotor generator with internal voltage of e1 a round rotor generator with internal voltage of e1 2 per unit x they have given and connected to a round rotor synchronous motor with the internal voltage of 1.3 per unit and x for that motor they have given okay so the reactance of the line connecting the generator to the motor is 0.5 per unit reactance between generator and motor is 0.5 per unit when the generator supplies 0.5 per unit power the rotor angle difference between machines will be so what is this actually so one generator is there for the generator internal reactance is there after that transmission line is there and after that internal reactance is there and this is going to be motor this is going to be generator okay so how much is eg e1 2 per unit okay how much is x1 1.1 per unit and how much is the transmission line 0.5 per unit and how much is the motor reactance 1.2 per unit and how much is the internal voltage of the motor 1.3 per unit okay how much is the active power being transmitted from generator is going to be 0.5 per unit okay so what is v actually of course the same formula we are going to use in power systems also multiple times what is the active power is going to be f vt by xs sin delta same formula can be used if f is here vt is here getting my point right so in our like you know power systems v1 v2 okay for example this particular voltage and this particular voltage there is no resistance here for example in power systems load flow or anywhere for example if you want to calculate maybe active power okay so in you know to calculate active power v1 v2 divided by x sin delta what do you say one minus delta two that's it okay so anyway let us consider ef as here 2 per unit vt is here because between these two voltages so is going to be 2 into 1.3 2 generator into 1.3 divided by there is no resistance only reactance you have to keep in mind so 1.1 plus 0.5 plus 1.2 1.1 2.2 2.3 2.8 sin delta equal to how much is the active power being sent here 0.5 per unit okay so how, how much is delta sin delta equal to 0.5 into 2.8 divided by 2 into 1.3 calculate that and sin inverse you are going to get delta the delta will come to 32.58 degrees so logic here is very simple in synchronous machines small small questions they will give so it's compulsorily it's better to prepare synchronous machines at loaded conditions